as I said, we have two speakers and I will introduce them uh, before they will actually speak. So um, first speaker we have today is um, Professor Zheng Yuqin or Yuqin Zheng, whatever um, the, the order is you're, you're uh, referred to, depending on probably where you are. She is a junior professor of modern Taiwan studies at the Department of Chinese Studies uh, at the University of Tübingen. And she really has researched uh, for a longer period of time in the area, the crossroads, so to say, of migration, global mobility, gender, uh, citizenship studies, and Asian politics. Um, and especially at the intersection now in her postdoctoral phase, so to say, of international mobilities of higher education and cross-cultural marriage. And this is also what she will uh, share uh, partly um, today. She has written intensively, uh, just mentioned a couple of um, things. Her, her doctoral thesis is also interesting, I think, for our context, becoming Taiwanese, also talking about first Taiwanese identities, the politics and struggle of marriage immigrants from mainland China to Taiwan. And she looked at it from both the social, political, and also the legal elements involved into those uh, marriages. And she focused on female marriage immigrants um, here. And uh, part of the PhD is also published in the book chapter at Rutledge um, in 2014. And um, she's now working also uh, more on migrants resistance and reformation. Uh, of what is considered to be good citizens. So also a good wife or a good mother uh, in that regard. And uh, she focuses now specifically uh, on Chinese entrepreneurs in Southern Europe. So also looking at transnational diaspora contexts and also um, the uh, interplay of urban governmentality and urban displacement of contracted workers in Taiwan. Um, today, she will share her research on academic mobility and Chinese-ness in transnational settings. And I would hand over the screen to um, Zheng Yuqian to share your research. Thanks a lot for being here and taking time to share your thoughts. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Professor Seekupfer, for giving me this opportunity and having me here to share with you my research. Um, I will first try to share the screen. Very good. This one. Yes. Great. Great. Everyone see it, right? Yes. Good. Um, yeah. Um, again, thank you for having me here. And uh, this invitation kind of came on time uh, during the period that I am uh, co-editing a book uh, called The Handbook of uh, Chinese Migration in Europe, which is scheduled to be published next year by the Brill. So um, Chinese and Chinese population, overseas Chinese, especially in the context of Europe, uh, is my uh, research main research concern now. Um, my talk today uh, will mainly be based on my article published in 2017 based on my postdoc research conducted between 2016 and 2017 on the intersection of student migration and marriage. The topic of education, my, my mobility and the families remains as my um, the research interest. The article, this article um, explores the migration trajectories of Chinese Taiwanese married couples who have met as students in a third country, such as the UK, and formed transnational and uh, cultural cross-cultural families. These couples met in a third country while seeking tertiary level education abroad and later entered into marriage. They faced additional complexities compared to transnational couples residing in one of the partner's home countries because of the multiple sets of regulations they need to take into consideration while making post-study life choices due to living in a third country. Um, to add one more layer to this, um, their life choices and the migration trajectories were even more complicated due to the fact that the partners were from two countries that uh, are in historical and political conflicts with each other. 
by exploring the uh, dynamics of their cross-cultural family making, um, micro-conflicts in their marriage, and most importantly, their migration trajectories. This article uncovers the personal and the structural link among, uh, links among the three countries with which these couples were engaged and provides a more nuanced understanding of this genre of transnational marriage emerging out of uh, student migration. So my main um, research concern here is how um, these three topics, uh, three aspects, uh, influence the migration trajectories and the life choices of Chinese Taiwanese couples met as students while studying abroad. Um, not yet. <laughs> um, these couples, they are unique examples of uh, transnational marriage in many ways. First, uh, mass student migration from China to Europe is a trend that only started decades ago. And so was the transnational marriage derived from that. Second, these marriages are between two citizens of countries with mutually hostile, hostile social, historical, and political backgrounds. Third, these marriages uh, involve three different legal frameworks and uh, immigration laws, uh, i.e. those of China, Taiwan, and the third country, and two of which were permitted with historical resentments towards each other. These features make the study of Ta Chinese Taiwanese couples who met as students study abroad different from the main body of literature on transnational marriages and marriage migration, which typically focus on the um, gendered power dynamics and unbalanced global economic development. Therefore, uh, I seek to depict how these um, factors influence the migration trajectories and the life choices of Chinese Taiwanese couples met as students while studying abroad. Um, before um, going into my research finding, I want to talk a little bit about my method. So um, I interviewed the Chinese Taiwanese couples who have met as students in a third country, uh, mainly in the UK, but um, also from met in Australia, Canada, Germany, and Singapore. And this uh, geographical disperse was due to the difficulty to uh, recruit informants. <laughs> that was um, very difficult for me to find informants because um, the method of snowballing, the most usually use, used one in the social science, it's not applicable for this uh, group of people. So I have to identify them one by one individually and approach them like uh, individually. So that was, I um, encountered some difficulties to uh, recruit informants. Um, therefore, for this research, I mainly conducted my field work in the UK between 2016 and 2017. And I conducted uh, in-depth, 18 in-depth interviews, um, 10 of them female, eight males, and 11 of them from Taiwan, and the seven of them from China. And the mean age of the informants were uh, 34.1. And uh, these group of people, they have relatively high economic and uh, educational attainments. So among the interviewees, four of them are, were PhD, three BA holders, and 11 of them were um, MA degree holders. Yeah. And uh, so now I'm gonna talk about the um, um, the Chinese Taiwanese um, mixed couple from these three um, aspects: student migration, uh, student migration in the context of student migration, and in the context of China Taiwan relationship, and the fact that they are subject to three different legal frameworks. So uh, first. Um, the, these uh, Chinese Taiwanese couples who have met as students in the third country need to be discussed in the context of uh, proliferating student migration to the West as the result of the internationalization of education and the opening up and the structural transformation in China on one hand 
and a mountaining uh, number of Taiwanese seeking uh, foreign degrees abroad, on the other hand. This has been um, dramatically, in, um, there has been a dramatic increase in student migration from China in the past two decades. And uh, as uh, you can see in this figure, which only covered one decade, but yeah. And uh, China has been the country sending the largest number of non-EU students to the UK. Moreover, Chinese applicants to the UK universities now outstrip the total number of would-be students from the EU since 2021. So this is the like, most recent number of Chinese students um, enrolled in the, in the UK. Then next, this is shows the, um, the number of Taiwanese students studying in the UK. Um, it is this a yellow line. It kind of uh, sometimes fractures, but kind of uh, stably uh, remains in the number around um, three to 4,000 per year. Uh, for Taiwanese students, according to the British Office Taipei, one third of Taiwanese students who choose to study abroad uh, do so in the UK. Although the number of students visa granted to Taiwanese to study in the UK has fluctuated over time, but UK has always been the third or fourth largest destination country for Taiwanese students seeking uh, higher, higher education abroad. Um, the first three were US, Australia, and Japan. These trends have opened up opportunities for Chinese and the Taiwanese students studying abroad to interact with each other in a more neutral environment that is, to a certain extent, less confined by state ideologies and the prevailing stereotypes and the prejudice against each other. Second, uh, regarding the second point, um, these couples met these Chinese Taiwanese couples, they met as students in a third country, but were uh, still conditioned by the social, political, and the legal settings and the culture of their countries of origin. For such couples, their lives and the marriages were transnational, and at the same time, their life choices and the migration tra trajectories were shaped by uh, factors that stretch across borders. Concerning the migration trajectories of these couples, among my interviewees, nine of them stayed in the country in which they met, four decided to go back to either China or Taiwan, and four went on to a fourth country, mainly Singapore or North American countries. Um, of those uh, who decided to stay in the country where they met their partners, all of them emphasizes that they were not keen to move to China due to reasons such as job opportunities and children's education, and most of all, uh, the low quality of life. So most interviewees um, viewed China as being overcrowded, too competitive and expensive. I mean, if you compare the first tier cities, living cost of the first tier cities in China with like middle to small size city in the UK, that would be the case. So they were also concerned about air pollution and the authoritarian regime. So for these reasons, they tend to avoid moving to China. Yet, despite sharing the above concerns, three informants um, moved to China because their partner secured a good position there even though only one of them was Chinese. Then uh, even less people choose to move to Taiwan. Taiwan has rather strict regulations on residency and employment restrictions for mainland Chinese, which discouraged Chinese Taiwanese couples from choosing Taiwan as their place of residence. Due to the political standoff between Taiwan and China, Chinese migrants in Taiwan are governed by a special law, which is not immigration law. <laughs> that has been criticized for being discriminatory, exclusionary, and restrictive. Given these concerns and constraints of living in China or Taiwan, Chinese Taiwanese couples who met the students studying abroad were left with an option, which is to stay in the third country or even to move on to the fourth country. 
Regarding their uh, choices of life, I um, look specifically to their decisions of entering into marriage, as this is one of the biggest decisions um, they make during that period. So seemingly independent personal decisions, such as where to go after graduation, after they finish their studies, and whether to get married, were not isolated from the society and state where participants and their partners come from. Instead, the couple's decisions were largely shaped by migration policies and the social, political, and the legal conditions of both origin and destination countries. Data gathered from my fieldwork suggested that one primary structural factor that put constraints on Chinese Taiwanese couples' conjugal life and migration trajectories was uh, state designed measures to implement the state's immigration policies, such as um, different visa schemes, administrative hardship, citizenship laws, or something like the UK government's hostile environment policy that aims to facilitate voluntary leave of uh, migrants. Some couples responded to these constraints by resorting to what I called instrumental use of marriage. When one of the partners Partner Fanners finished the study and no longer has the leave to remain in the UK, but uh, the couple intends to remain the relationship. Then entering into marriage is a relatively efficient and cost saving move compared with a long distance relationship that needs to be maintained through phone calls, uh, Skype, and uh, many long distance flights. Then as a uh, um, Non-EU citizens, the, mar the marriage can only be registered in the UK while one or both partners have the right to remain in the UK. This time limit played an important role in pushing the couples to take the life choice to enter into marriage. This strategy was mentioned by the, this strategy of entering into marriage was uh, mentioned by uh, many informants. And all of them indicated that uh, in entering into marriage enabled their partner to stay in the, con the current place of residence, or in one case, facilitated a partner to rejoin the other, uh, the, the other ones in the UK. The impact of uh, China-Taiwan relations on the couple's life choice was multiplied by the fact that uh, they are subject to three different legal frameworks and prompt uh, many of my in informants to engage in strategical use of marriage. It was much easier and more convenient to register their marriage at a local council in the UK compared to that in China or Taiwan. In the UK, once the registration in the UK, uh, in UK is completed, they can just take the marriage certificate issued by the local registry office to the Chinese embassy or the Taipei representative office in the UK for document notarization and authorization. After that, the marriage can be recognized in both China and Taiwan. In contrast, if one chooses to get married in China or Taiwan, the whole process of uh, notari notarization and authentication is lengthy and extremely tedious due to the mutual distrust between the two governments who do not recognize each other in official terms, thus not recognizing relevant documents issued by the opposite side. Um, the complicated and lengthy procedures prompted my informants to enter into marriage in a third country for convenience, while one or both of them was still a, children, uh, a student. The finding of the study showed the couple's concern of should I stay or should I go, which is also the title of my article, the post-study migration trajectories and the use of marriage as a strategy to tackle the issues affecting the couples. It also underlies the, that uh, transnational marriage is under state scrutiny, regardless of where the marriage takes place or the social economic standing of the couple. In the case of Chinese Taiwanese couples, particularly those living in the third countries, while they are physically outside the territorial space of their countries of origin, their decisions are not free from politics between China and Taiwan. 
their decisions to enter into marriage and their migration uh, trajectories were made in the transnational space shaped by three countries and their territory bound uh, migration legis uh, legislations. Um, to conclude, um, Chinese Taiwanese couples who met as uh, students in a third country are different from those who have met and or resident in Taiwan or China in too many respect, respects. First, these Chinese Taiwanese couples uh, come from a certain social economic background that enable them to pursue a degree abroad. And secondly, they are situated in a place which um, the place much less influenced by ideologies and the prejudice rooted in cross strait relations in the nationalism at the individual level. Uh, being distant from uh, their countries of origin provides a relatively neutral context of interactions with people from the other side of the strait. Nevertheless, Chinese Taiwanese mixed marriage as transnational marriages uh, implicates the involvement of immigration practices and dealing with state regulations. In their case, three different legal frameworks and the institutions, namely those of China, Taiwan, and the third country, were concerning the uh, migration trajectories and the life choices of these couples. Meanwhile, some cross-strait couples have resorted to the strategy of entering into marriage for instru instrumental concerns to avoid multiple layers of inconveniences, such as restrictive immigration laws and administrative difficulties encountered in China and Taiwan. The marriage offici uh, officiated in the third country may be seen as a strategic response to try to avoid inconvenient regulations and complicated procedures in either China or Taiwan that would otherwise uh, divide or separate the uh, couples. Then some non-institutional factors also figure in their decision not to return to China or Taiwan. Restrictive regulations in Taiwan or PRC for PRC nationals and the life quality issues in China were mentioned by informants as the main reasons for not deciding to visit in Taiwan and China. While these couples are seemingly relieved from uh, social discrimination in the third country, they still cannot completely disengage from institutionalized cross strait relations in the state ideologies, especially when it comes to marriage and migration decisions. To sum up, um, the data gathered from the fieldwork has showed that migrants opp opportunistically balance a number of factors when they make decisions, which are job opportunities, a quality of life, right to legal residence, and their children's access to education through choosing migration trajectories and uh, uh, strategic use of marriage. Being subject to three different legal framework and uh, to long lasting conflicts between China and Taiwan has impacted both the marital life and their choices regarding their career and place of residence. Lastly, the research findings and analysis might be able to, uh, might, be, might be valuable in understanding uh, Chinese Taiwanese couples who met through not studies, but work, travel, or other circumstances. The number of such couples is likely to incre increase in the future. Thank you very much.